uh, yeah, uh, we'll have Claire Barrett coming on stage uh, for a presentation about the platform and ecosystems. So hello, Claire, how are you? I'm very well, Mehdi, how are you? I'm doing well, doing well. So we have a 25 minute uh, together uh, with a, a presentation you prepared for us about the strategies versus plans for financial services APIs. The stage is yours, Claire, as long as you can share your screen. Thank you. I'll uh, just introduce myself and uh, uh, you can see me all right, everyone there? Yeah, we can see you all right, uh, the, not the slide yet, but uh, we can yeah. see you all right. Okay, great. Um, and uh, thank you for a uh, kind introduction. And uh, uh, my name is Claire Barrett at APIs First and I make strategy happen. I'm, uh, uh, I've spent uh, uh, the last 15 years or so mainly in, in Australia supporting uh, insurers and banks in making their strategies come to life. Uh, and recently, of course, with uh, APIs as a core part of that. And I'm going to share with you today um, some of my insights about the differences between strategies and execution plans, um, some of the ways in which organisations have come about choosing uh, how to adopt at which point, which of those, and uh, 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 what people are doing um, where they're operating in more of a vacuum. Can everyone see the screen? Okay. So I'm gonna cover uh, three key points, some where organizations uh, 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 actually look to uh, start their API strategies from and how those inform different execution plans for the key stakeholders, uh, the key different actors in uh, uh, API enablement. And I'm then going to talk um, about uh, some of the things that you can be doing to move forward where perhaps the clarity of the API strategy is, uh, is not necessarily that visible or it's still emerging or maybe is a little bit inconsistent, which is some of the practicalities of what we see in um, organisations. So I'm going to anchor to this uh, visual of uh, the key actors uh, who are involved in API activities at large organizations and, and uh, um, that, that includes financial institutions and insurers. Uh, there's the sponsor community, the people with the funding, the resources, uh, the, the influence and uh, across the organization, I consider them the elders of, uh, of an organization who are um, uh, driving out and accountable for overall business strategy. And that is in, uh, is often enabled through uh, the transformer type of community, the explorers that may have um, uh, functions like digital innovation uh, capabilities. They may, they are looking for uh, new opportunities to realize uh, 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 different opportunities for customers. They're close, they're close to understanding the pain points and things today, um, and they're looking at API-enabled opportunities to realise new uh, new horizons. And the technologists are those with the roadmaps, the the, the navigation, the tools, the uh, the technical know-how, um, the developers to uh, realise uh, the uh, API-enabled activities um, in line with different strategies. But what's um what I'm going to talk about is where uh, each of these three might have one or these three might have been the uh, leading point to establish the APIs as part of the DNA for an organization. Um, uh, there's no question that everybody has APIs at some part of their strategy, but the way that they have chosen to execute it and bring it to life for their customers is quite different and can be uh, framed under these three different uh, starting points. So an example in the insurance industry of a, of a business-led, uh, 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 in, in this case, InsurTech uh, player, Lemonade, um, has not just presented a, uh, a business 
uh, a different business proposition around uh, insurance offers as a different model, um, they also have um, uh, expect are expecting to exploit that product through the um, APIs that, that will enable them to uh, distribute into other businesses. You could look at an organization like Capital One and suggest that uh, their API strategy is also deeply um, uh, embedded in their uh, is, is a business led approach. They have defined their business from the outset as very much a technology centric business of banking. Um, so the uh, and the the way in which they go to market, the way in which they recruit, retain, and contribute to the technology uh, environment overall uh, is in support of their banking business, but very very core to how they see themselves. And their Dev Exchange API uh, portal is a great example of how uh, they are very open about um, sharing the skills, the capability, the technical know-how that they have uh, used themselves to enable others uh, to build. Um, so there's a, there's a very technology-centric uh, approach to an API strategy where, where effectively APIs are table stakes. Um, the, for organizations taking this approach, the transformer type activities are going to be um, very, uh, very focused on APIs as products having uh, top to bottom uh, accountability for uh, performance of those APIs with long running collaborative teams. Uh, the technologist roles in um, enabling the API capabilities top to bottom through the technical stack uh, enable this um, uh, highly responsive um, and, and growing uh, capability for the end uh, customers playing in their ecosystem. To look at um, some examples of transformation-led uh, um, uh, starting points for an API strategy, um, I've chosen BBVA in banking and, and Euler MS here in the insurance industries as examples of how they're very much identified and defined as a bank with uh, their um, uh, multi-year transformation programs, enabling them and driving them to uh, initially use e APIs to um, make current processes more efficient and to offer new customer experiences, but over time be able to um, exploit those in, in, in many other creative ways to uh, simplify customer experiences, uh, to offer new products. Um, and extend out and, and play into broader ecosystems. Organizations with a transformer-led approach to their API strategy um, uh, expect to start by looking at APIs as uh, part of that internal change. And some of the other presentations today referred to that as a starting point where uh, the um, ability for APIs to simplify the backend complexity of the technology environment allows them to be presented as building blocks to create new innovative customer experiences. And the call therefore on, on the sponsors, the elders in the organization is to uh, uh, prioritize funding that will enable this significant, often significant multi-year investment in realizing a uh, um, a more straightforward architecture uh, and API enablement. Over time, that, that will extend, but that is a symptom of a, of a transformer-led approach. An example of a technology-led uh, business would be La Parisienne in the insurance business or uh, Solaris Bank in banking, where their, uh, their go-to-market is that the APIs are their business. Uh, they um, uh, have basically established platforms uh, that empower other organizations to use their capabilities uh, to, to um, build out their products. And so theirs is effectively um, starting from the technology outwards. And uh, that calls on API execution plans that are more focused on um, uh, obviously the third party developer experience, the API. Uh, high-performing APIs from a technology perspective 
and the sponsors and elders in those organisations would be looking to uh, establish uh, organisational structures, funding models, uh, um, accountabilities and performance in the organisation that is aligned behind uh, uh, those APIs as products. And the explorers are continuously looking for new API business case, commercial cases, uh, and um, realizing and uh, working on the the right pricing models, the right um, go to market positions, the continuous uh, examples for them to be able to play. So, so if those different starting points reflect uh, the why for a particular organization, so. Um, in each case, a business-led approach is looking at um, uh, why for um, the, the, each of them is answering a different case of why. The challenge then is how to execute on the what and the how. Uh, and I would see that API planning as opposed to API strategy is actually about the questions of what APIs to develop and in what sequence, in what priority, um, what skills, delivery, capabilities required. And how do all of those three stakeholder community groups um, work together on uh, establishing the right operating model, the right funding and governance? And for all organisations, this is a journey. Um, it, these, these questions will have different answers um, year on year. Uh, many of them have, have answered many of these questions already. Many are still, still looking at how to get going. In each case, the execution plans need to be able to articulate their contribution to the organization's broader transformation. What are they trying to achieve? Are they trying, um, are they defining themselves as uh, a technology company, as a financial institution, as a enabler for other organizations to be successful? Each of these um, whys will create very different what's and how's. It's not unusual for people to be operating uh, or feeling as if they're operating within a bit of a vacuum. They, uh, they may have uh, some clarity around um, strategy, but, but it may not be consistent or it may not be perhaps at the right level of detail to be able to give those, those who are actually working on API activities on a day-to-day -day basis enough direction to move forward comfortably. Uh, my advice is it's much better to move somewhere and to uh, learn through taking small steps through frequently iterating than it is to do nothing and, and uh, uh, have an excuse, if you like, that you're waiting for some clarity, which perhaps some others have not seen as the greatest priority or um, are maybe struggling with actually pulling together clearly for you. Um, what is important is to ensure that the data and stories that you choose to demonstrate your progress and, uh, and show that you're making a difference through your API activities on a regular basis um, are done to be able to get the right attention and momentum. And if you take this um, approach, you'll be in good company. I've been talking to uh, CTOs and CIOs and uh, change agents, uh, consultants, uh, tech savvy business leaders and uh, IT specialists at complex organizations going through these types of changes. And they have said that they, while they would put some of their effort, it would probably be about 40% of their effort in showing how their progress through this transformation is making a difference on today's measures which could be revenue, profitability, um, uh, efficiencies, and they would put more effort, about 60%, into setting new bars around how they are delivering uh, success. Uh, I've given some examples here of how the sophistication of API measurement will grow over time, um, and this continuous, these continuous cycles of uh, experimentation, of review, refinement, uh, and moving ahead will generate measures and stories that can be used to promote within the organization more broadly and get those different stakeholder groups aligned around uh, the, 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 the priorities for the organization. Um, 
other places where um, people can get going and that are um, seen as delivering on uh, strong value are in building capacity ahead of anticipating future requirements. So what do I mean by this? Um, I ask people about whether they would um, put money and effort and investment into building capability ahead of requirements. There's a bit of build it and they will come. So this could be API uh, infrastructure support. This could be things as opposed to investing in something that has a known requirement against a specific business case. And they said that they would put um, about half of their effort in each of those. In other words, they would um, uh, follow what made sense to actually build out in anticipation of specific customer-driven business requirements, um, uh, new products, features, et cetera, that, uh, their, uh, custom, that their internal stakeholders would be asking for. They would likewise invest in as much uh, in engineering and automation as they would in seeking top-down uh, leadership direction and support for uh, the types of agile cultures and behaviours that will enable the rapid experimentation and uh, culture for <clears throat> creating successful API-enabled change. And likewise, they would also um, put more effort into uh, building a culture and practice of continuous experimentation than they would uh, working towards small incremental um, improvements. So in each case, they would they they would they would be managing this trade off. Um, but as they get more mature, they are recommending putting more effort and more into investment into uh, some of these things here. Um, and these are things that you can be thinking about uh, learning from at conferences like this to uh, um, actually help your organizations accelerate their progress. So in conclusion, uh, the API strategy is the business strategy for many financial services organizations. Uh, uh, however, there are subtleties about the history of where they've come from and how they are positioning their business and APIs as part of that, uh, which uh, is really important to be able to get under the covers of and be able to inform what are the right priorities for moving ahead on execution, uh, because there is an enormous amount for people to be able to get their arms around and progress. And these things are requirements that, uh, that, that um, push into traditional boundaries for many of these organisations. So the reason why I keep anchoring back to these three different stakeholder communities is they're not an org structure, but they are the players and, the, uh, and they represent the capabilities and expertise and accountabilities around successful APIs that need to be able to work together um, and move the organization collectively towards a, a, a true API-driven mindset that informs strategy, that informs future plans and transformation, um, and informs the priorities for the technology investment. So expect that these plans play out very differently in every organization. Uh, uh, but also recognise that uh, the clarity and consistency that you'd get from um, a, a clear API strategy that is regularly updated, while that's ideal, uh, it's not there in every case. And you can still make progress uh, um, uh, uh, with, with, while, while waiting and actually contributing to that evolving strategic perspective. So I'd like to leave you with um, some questions to think about for yourselves or the organisations that you're working with, which are where are they at in, in articulating their API strategy and its context for the businesses uh, that they contribute to? And how are that, is that translating into API execution plans? And what can you do or what can your clients, your, uh, your colleagues be doing while some of those things are still getting clear? What are the things that are going to be bringing those three uh, groups? Where are you in those three groups? Um, where is your team, your colleagues, the people that you're working with? And what are you doing to be able to bring them more closely together?
you very much, Claire, uh, for the presentation. So we have uh, some time for uh, uh, for for a few uh, uh, questions. Um, so on the on, on these three different strategies you present, so it's a business led, uh, transformation led, or API led. Uh, I, I, actually, when one takes over the other, when one actually in the company, uh, because sometimes in the com in the organization some may occur at different time and place, but at some point the different colonies, right? They will they will meet. Uh, how do you handle these uh, uh, these discussions about which one we need to follow or 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 to continue? So, uh, so is the question um, at which point um, do you how do you bring them together, or is the question about uh, which... let's, say, let's say in a big organization someone started with a sponsor led, and uh, another part of the organization is more business led, mm -hmm. you know, and at some point the two grow. Yeah, mm -hmm. how do you handle the governance aspect? Yeah, so the the, the situation I, I, there is a bit of an it depends, and and typically most organisations tend to have uh, uh, they, they will tend to have API capabilities in one of the three, um, which tends to be the place that so you, so you look the key the key thing is to look for the successes and to amplify the successes across those different communities through communications and planning. There's an awful lot of organisational change. That goes on to um, and and I'd call it like traditional what used to be kind of project comms um, that now goes on around uh, bringing to life uh, what's actually been happening and so depending on for each of those three areas there's going to be different things that the other two are going to need to be able to understand about where they're coming from so if there's a let's say for example there's a um, a transformation capability that's been delivering a lot of uh, new um, mobile features, uh, um, uh, new bank banking features through a mobile app, for example, um, in, a, in a digital scenario. But the, uh, the development of some of those APIs hasn't been um, through a central place. There'll be a governance expectation around um, supporting that. And it would be a case of working with the technologists to build the right developer, internal developer capability portal for API management and cataloging and documentation that can then provide visibility and uh, move towards ideally as much simplified and um, simplified governance as possible. The big, big, big challenge for many, many organizations is they need to move from a project-based construct for their governance um, to a to a product based or an, an, a, in this case an API based, and many governance functions are tied into the project delivery framework. So there are certain governance steps at different points in a project, and that needs to be rethought in the API um, world. So that's an example of where uh, they need to be able to take small examples, show them to show show people what's working, and. Uh, uh, and provide situations for provide a governance situation where new APIs can bubble up, and it's easier for people to go to what's already available in the organisation than it is for them to start with something new each time. Yeah. Also, a question about uh, how, let's say, uh, the internal evangelism can scale. You know, sometimes it begins by a smaller team, and but mm -hmm. how this team can get influence compared to other sponsor technologies or transformers, how how they can like get the legitimacy to to continue and grow inside the organization. Uh, I think um, uh, it, I mean it's it, a lot of it comes down to, to to personality and influence and support. So um, some of the the, the 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 research project that I was referring to in in my presentation, I asked um, about for people to make change to stick. I asked them whether they would use internal or external uh, capabilities as a way of getting change to, and, and, and this influence that you're talking about is stickiness. So how do we make this investment and make sure that it, it actually stays? So I gave people the option and said, would you invest in getting external experts to give you a fast traction, quick um, injection of, uh, of change? Or would you look to invest in your current employees and build up their skills and capabilities? So more people in this case, Many more people in the organization understand what an API is. They understand um, what its role is, its opportunity, um, how, it, how, it, it, uh, um, how it contributes 
to customer experiences, how it contributes to external product opportunities. People said that they, regardless of size of industry action, size of organization or industry, it, it was very consistent that people would invest 50-50 of their effort towards building up skills internally um, in new ways of working and in uh, new tech and, and new capabilities. And they would also spend um, effort in building, in getting external experts in to give them uh, pointed accelerators at specific points in time. But there is a big move towards um, more insourcing for um, across the across the world. I think at the moment, and uh, that and and in this area, this this need to be very very close to understanding the business, understanding customer proposition. It's in the API space. I think that a lot of this in-house capability is being built, and therefore the questions are how can um, uh, how can those organisations help to scale that up um, and uh, propagate that kind of expertise uh, uh, efficiently and quickly um, and and provide the right employee proposition and skills at this time in the world that we're in. <laughs> yeah, maybe last question uh, here, uh, but. Uh, for let's say large organization, large, large financial organization, uh, do do you recommend or uh, a sponsor led or technology led or a transformer led uh, strategy or it or it depends? <laughs> it, it, it depends. It's um, because it depends actually on how the organization sees itself. Um, so the examples, the couple of examples I give you is you know do, do, do they see themselves as a as as a technology company that happens to um, have, a, have a role in a particular sector or is it a, um, uh, you know, a, a bank or an insurer uh, who happens to uh, um, be really good at using tech? I mean, that's, those, those, are, those, are quite, those are very visceral um, uh, core things for people to be able to talk about it at, at, at one level. Um, and then it comes down to, uh, it, it, it also depends on what experience is already in place. Uh, it depends on the, um, the customer types of relationships Clearly, um, uh, organisations with a with a large business uh, customer base are going to have a different um, view on this than those that have a lot of consumers. Um, that uh, uh, it depends on their uh, current technology, their their technology plans, depends on the leadership teams, their experiences. Um, I think there's no no hard and fast. The important thing, I think, is 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 to to kind of. Uh, be able to step back and look at the organization and say, well, actually, which of these three roles is being the most active today and what opportunity have we got for them to pull the other two along um, and align? Yeah, so the same idea that sometimes we, we, we discuss about like what are, don't think what's the best uh, APIs for your business, business model, but what are the best APIs? Okay, it's the opposite. <laughs> Don't think what are the best uh, business model for APIs, but what are the best APIs for a business model? Yeah. So yeah. That, that Don't think about what the business can do for your APIs, but what your APIs can do for your business or something. Yeah. 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 And actually, uh, yeah. Yeah. Some uh, some president uh, yeah used to say that for <laughs> all. The time. Yeah. Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, thank you uh, for this insightful uh, talk about strategy and plans for financial services APIs.